Hey YouTube, this is Rishika. So this video would be my 46th video tutorial on data stage. Uh, as you guys know, I have been making uh, data stage video tutorials on YouTube. Uh, for the past videos, I have uh, dealt, dealt with development of the debug category and most of the processing category in the palette. So, uh, and few other stages too, I guess. And for the past two videos or so, I have been dealing with the real-time task, like the uh, most popular and the most frequently asked questions, uh, yet simple, uh, simple ones, right? Because basically, uh, my focus is to educate the data stage learners or the beginners, right? So that's the reason I'm starting with the simple ones, yet the most popular ones, okay? Uh, so popular ones from what? my perspective is right okay that's a disclaimer here okay so uh so uh to be to be uh honest it's like the continuation of the uh last previous video video 40 45th video uh because what we learned in 45th video was how to remove duplicates without using remove duplicate state right so what we are doing there was we are having a series of records and we are trying to uh, filter out the original record and whenever that original record is repeating like based on the key fields we are counting that as duplicate right so that's what we learned from a uh, previous video and in this video I said it's it's like the second part of that video because what we're gonna do in this video is it's pretty much same although the design would be different so what we're gonna do in this video is we have we're gonna uh, filter out only the unique records basically so now you might be wondering what's the difference between the original record and the unique record right so the original record can have duplicates of itself so then uh, when it has duplicates we are trying to filter out okay this is the original and this is a duplicate of that original record that is what we have done in the previous uh, video uh, right so now in this video it's it's like the unique record unique record means it's not repeating itself when that specific record has a duplicate we don't care about the uh, all of those records right unique record is the uh, record which is unique by itself it should not have any other uh, any other uh, duplicates or any other records based on the key field whatever key field you, uh, you define there it should not repeat itself whenever it, it is repeated that is not uh, that is called not a unique record right it's not it it's uh, not unique anymore okay so when it's not unique anymore so sometimes the requirement might come like this uh, so uh, so requirement might be something like this so whenever uh, only only collect the unique records uh, we are not worrying about the duplicates but we are just worrying about uh, the unique ones okay so that's that's what might the requirement or sometimes you might get a uh, requirement like something like uh, I, I want to process or I want to write uh, only unique records to the target and yet I want to see what are the duplicates or what are the non-unique records I can't say duplicates but they can be non-unique records okay so uh, that's what we're gonna do here so first we're gonna do uh, we're gonna filter out uh, what are the unique records we're gonna filter out only the unique records okay so let's see the data it's pretty much the same data from the last one okay so this is our data okay so this is our basic data okay so whatever it is uh, so when it's empty it means that null okay so this these are the null fields okay okay so now the first scenario is we are uh, what if uh, the student ID is a key field okay so let's say in this scenario the student ID is key field and now the business requirement is uh, something like this pass unique records uh, collect the unique records based on student ID key field into a target okay so that's the business requirement so when that when they say unique records on student ID they mean that something like this so uh, first we need to sort it right so first we need to sort based on the key field because that's what we do uh, when someone uh, like asks for that right because when it's a huge data uh, 
uh, it gets messed up and it, it, it will not be sorting. Let's say uh, some 10 is coming on first partition and uh, ten, another 10 is coming on some 8th partition or 10th partition or something like that. It can't, it can't really analyze, right? Uh, so uh, that's the reason we're gonna use uh, hash partitioning or sorting basically uh, by ascending order or descending order whatever the order might be so we need to first sort it okay so when I sort based on the key field I'm worrying only about the key field because this is the field which I'm uh, worried about right okay so uh, because this is the field business is interested in not to pass uh, non unique records to the target they want to pass only unique ones okay so now so uh, I sorted it uh, based on the student ID field. I didn't care anything about this. If you see, it's 10, uh, 17 Taylor. 17 Taylor is the original data, but it's going to be something like 10 Taylor. Okay. So I, I mean, it's not going to be this way in data stage, but uh, really I didn't care about any of this. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't really care about any of this. I just sorted. I just want to show an example on, it's not like a, uh, I want to show everything on data stage because we just want to understand the concept first and uh, predict the output and then compare those output with the data stage. So that's when we really understand things, right? So yeah, it's it's pretty much same in the real time scenario, right? So if you're trying to, if, if you have like if then else statement or something like that, first you're going to have to create the test. If you don't have a data, you want to create the test data and analyze the output and then see if the output matches your anal analysis or something like that, right? So that's the same we are doing here. Okay. So uh, yeah, I started, uh, sorry, I keep interrupting in the middle and say something else. Uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, okay, so uh, I sort it based on the student ID field. Okay, so then now let's see what are the unique records. Unique records, what did I say? Unique records are something which should not be repeating on the unique key field, right? I mean, not unique key field, key field, right? So the key field is this. So 10 is there, but it's again there is 10, right? So this is not unique record anymore because it's it has two tens. This is not unique record anymore. Okay, so this is not unique record. It's it's not called duplicate, but it's called something like uh, sorry, non unique record. It's not a duplicate. Yeah, uh, I just copied here, I guess. So yet say u and n u. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's called uh, unique and non-unique, okay? So because 10 is repeating itself and this is a key field, it's not unique anymore, okay? And 11, do you see 11 here? 11 should be something above or below because we sorted, right? And it, yeah, there is no 11. So this is called a unique record. When the key field, there is no more, uh, no, no, not anymore of record based on the, of that particular key field. Sorry, I put it in the wrong way. Yeah, so when there is no more uh, value of for that key field, the repeating value, the value of the key field is not repeating, that is called a unique one. I just want to make it very clear between the unique ones and the original and the duplicate because that's where people usually confuse, okay? So yeah, this is a, uh, 11 is a unique record. So that is what we want. So business really wants to process these types of records, okay? And now 13, 13, 13. So we are not really caring about any of these three records because they are not unique anymore because they are repeated themselves. Okay. And now 14. Do you see 14 here? Yes, I do see 14. So these two. So because there is, it's repeating itself, 14 is repeating itself twice. Uh, we, we, don't, we are not, uh, they are not unique anymore. So we don't, we don't really need to bother about this. However, 16 and 17, they are unique, right? Because they are, I don't see any 16s and 17s anymore, okay? So these are unique. And 18 is also unique because it's, uh, sorry, it's 18 is non-unique because it's repeating. And these fields, uh, I just wanted to show you, it's null, right? Uh, because the key field is null, it's it's unique. I mean, I, I, I probably uh, in real time, we don't, process null values forward I guess but yeah I just want to show you guys because it, it really cares about this and for some reason it's counted as non-unique okay so yep that's uh that's what it is so th this is what I meant okay 
so now uh, how many unique records we got so not unique okay this is yes so which is 11 okay so one and the other is 16 2 and the other one is 17 3 so out of these 14 records out of these 14 records we just have uh, three unique records okay so now let's design a job and see if it's the same thing okay for the key field uh, of uh, what is that student ID okay so first I'm gonna explain the design and then I'm gonna give all the values or the parameters or the job properties or whatever we call okay so first we're gonna read the file and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a copy stage here put a copy stage let me design first and then explain why I'm doing uh, why I'm putting all of these uh, stages here okay so copy and then okay I'm just thinking uh, what am I doing here? okay yeah and then probably okay so the other thing uh, which I want to say here is the task can be done in a zillion of ways uh, here in the data stage they can be done in a zillion number of ways okay it's not like you need to always design this way it depends on the other requirements too okay so this is what I'm designing in my requirement at this point of time but if the same requirement comes something uh, later I'm gonna change my uh, design I guess okay so it, it all depends on that particular requirement and that particular person who designs it okay it's not like a standard format like everybody uh, who gets this requirement uh, uh, gonna design the same thing they should use copy aggregator transformer join and yeah right to the target file that's not it how it works okay that's not how it works okay so I'm just explaining the concept and the basic design so you can just uh, figure out yourself and try working out with other stages too okay so this will be my design okay for now so what I'm going doing is I'm reading the file from this stage okay I'm copying it copying I'm writing it to two different outputs okay I'll explain why I'm writing two different outputs uh, okay, you know what? Let me. Uh, I can't explain without uh, the data, actual data. So let me uh, pull the data and then explain it to make more sense, I guess. So scenario three. Okay, and first line in column names is true. I'm not changing anything because this is a basic design. And however, I don't see this. It doesn't matter, but I just want to <laughs> change this. Okay, and here uh, it's to ID, it's to ID, and last name and course. Okay, and everything will be back. After. Okay, that that's me. Let let's make our life easier. Not our life, but I'm making my life easier. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. It's pretty simple data so let's give 20 and let's give something like 4 or yeah 2 doesn't matter and we do have null nulls right so let's make them all nullable okay and now sorry. and now okay we have the file now oh, let's view the data So this is how uh, my data looks like from the source. Okay, so now we are good. Let's move on to the next stage. So next stage is our copy stage. So we are doing nothing in copy stage, uh, but we're just mapping it to the output. Okay, so yep, that's it. I'm just, oh, sorry. I just mapped to two. So whenever you use copy stage, just don't forget to map to how many outputs you have the mapping should be uh, the same as a count of the how many output links you have okay so yeah that's the thing and here now we move on to the aggregator stage okay so what's a key field in a, uh, what's a key field in this scenario here 
student id right our first scenario is what if the key field is student id and the business says uh, only unique records should be passed to the target okay so student id so we are trying to group by student id okay because that's what we need to do right so uh, we are trying to group by student id so we are trying to group by student id and see and see the count basically okay so sorry okay so we are trying to my key field grouping key is student id and trying to group by student id and then this is a key one and then aggregation type i'm not gonna use calculation but i just don't want to calculate anything i just want to count rows based on the grouping grouping field right grouping key field okay so just count rows and now count output column is what uh, what you want to name that column and this is very silly let's say uh, count okay uh, count field or something like that yeah it doesn't matter yeah count field or something okay so uh, this is the field which stores the number of uh, which stores the count of that specific row uh, grouped a uh, group done student id okay this it doesn't matter i know i have null values but it doesn't matter probably it matters only in the calculation field i guess in the count fields i guess it doesn't matter okay this alone all output okay uh, i mean if if it matters it's not a big deal i guess because as far as i know when the business says uh, you don't uh, some, something uh, pass only the unique records uh, to the target we don't really care about the nulls because that doesn't make sense right those are not unique and we don't really care about them right because what i mean what sense does it make to pass the null fields even though it's unique it, it's not a, uh, it's it's a waste of data i guess right i mean in my point of view it's i i don't really uh, i mean it doesn't really make sense to me at least okay so uh, okay whatever so even though we have null values we just leave it aside uh okay so here the student id input okay now the output gonna be let's map just drag and drop everything okay so this countful see here this countful is record count right this is something which data stage itself has the de derivation for i didn't give anything i just added count field my i just add i just gave the data stage my field name that's all i gave because i choose the aggregation type as count rows the data stage itself is uh, giving this record count i guess i discussed about this in uh, aggregator stage uh, video i guess uh, i'm sure i'm sure uh, i don't guess i'm pretty sure i discussed about this okay so uh, that's all okay and here uh, it's done okay and the other thing which I guess I also spoke uh, about this in the aggregator video, but I just want to mention it again. Whenever you have the aggregator type of field, always, uh, most of, the, I guess it's always, yeah, it's uh, the SQL type is double. Okay, this was one of the interview questions when I interviewed for my job. Okay, so, yeah, now, <clears throat> now I'll tell you why did I use the copy stage, okay? so what i want to do is i want to pass all fields to the output but pass only the uh, i mean i just want to pass all the fields uh but not all the rows right i want to pass all the columns basically but not all the rows right but because when we use aggregator stage it gonna just uh, pass only the uh, group group by field right so that's the reason I use the copy stage here. And I don't want this count field in the output, so I'm just not mapping it. Okay, so that's the reason I used the copy stage here. Okay, I'll explain uh, when we come to join what we are doing exactly. So I'm not really mapping this because I don't want uh, it, this field to map to my output here. However, I care about this field because I'm giving a constraint here. Constraint is a condition which we give at the, uh, uh, what do we call here? Like the uh, field, uh, not field level. Uh, it's it's at the output level, right? So go to the constraint and choose input column and count field, okay? And what constraint should we write here? We are caring about those fields which has only uh, uh, one, right? So which is only once, right? so when you count field okay 
okay so when when this is counted when this is counted so this is based on the grouping right so it does grouping 10 and 10 go uh, is grouped once and now it count rows based on the key field so 10 is given as one whatever uh, yeah it one of the fields is one of the rows is given one and the other one is given uh, no it's not given one so basically uh, okay something like this so basically when it groups it group the grouping uh, the basically the count will be two here so the group count will be two and this will be one because it will not have uh, it will it is it it doesn't have any other uh, 11 right so it's the count is just one okay and for 13 these will have group uh, group number as three because they have three right something like this right count rows like it's it's counting based on the uh, uh, number of rows right okay so that is what it is doing here so when when we want to write a constraint here we are pass we are the, our business requirement is to pass only the unique records and what does the unique record count have one right so we are passing only those unique records which in turn has like count field is one so the unique records obviously have count field one and that's what we are really caring about right so that is the constraint we should uh, add here okay that's all so that's good we are done with that and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to join here and what is the key field we want to join here student id so now you might want to uh, ask a question for yourself or for me, obviously. Uh, why can't you use uh, uh, other stages instead of join? Like, uh, why can't we uh, put something something in the other stage, uh, just funneling? Uh, I, yeah, we can't use funnel because we are just getting here one output, right? One field, right? And now from here we get three fields, so we can't funnel. For the funnel, the metadata should be same, right? It should be three and three, so we can't funnel. I'm using join because I want to pass only those records which join with these things. Okay, so this is my uh, primary link and this is my secondary link. So I'm trying to basically, whatever keys are found here, I'm trying to uh, pass the uh, remaining two columns for only those fields so basically I'm um, uh, my key is student ID so whatever keys whatever uh, okay this is what it is so whatever keys are found on this link whatever keys or whatever uh, number of rows are passed from this these these uh, copy stage rows will match with this and only those rows uh, those rows will pass out to the target okay not all the rows i'll explain you it would be easy when i run the output okay so see now we have only student id till the transformer right and where did we get these two these two we got from uh, i mean all these three we got from here but this is the one which we get you we get from join because that is the key field for the uh, joining right so yep yeah. so just map those now i guess you will try uh, you will understand why i use the copy stage copy stage because aggregator uses only the grouping field it just does the grouping thing it does not pass all the other fields okay and transformer i'm just uh, trying to get the unique records here you can probably use the filter stage too okay doesn't matter but yeah uh, it's transformer okay and the other uh, the other output link on the copy stage is just grabbing the other fields the left out fields like the last name and the course and trying to do a join on this based on the key field what is the key field on here grouping field student id right so it's trying to do join on that so that only those which match from which match uh, the fields coming from the transformer will move forward. So that means basically it's the fields that are joining are the unique fields and then moving to the forward. Okay, so that's what it is. And now let's give something stupid file or something. Okay, whatever. I don't really care about, right? And first line in column names is true, obviously okay and format yeah it doesn't matter okay let's just keep that 
okay and now let's run the job and while a job is running we can just analyze our uh, output and count and then see if it if our analysis is as per the data stage or something we messed up in either of them or yeah okay so here what did I say here so how many unique records one sorry one two and three right so we should get three records so three records will come from the transformer the output link of the transformer will grab the three records and the copy stage grabs all the count but since we put the join there copy and transformer those output links are joining it does all the joining based on the key field which is student id and then passes only the output uh, only the number of records that are matched on the transformer uh, constraint okay so basically it should give out uh, output as three and that's what we are talking about it's good okay so let me show you here so we are getting 14 rows okay 14 records and obviously copy stage writes entire uh, everything right so 14 to aggregator and 14 to join okay that's good and then what's happening here it's okay what's happening here Wh what does it do it counted fields right so uh, basically it counted fields here eight rows so one two three three sorry okay one two three four five five six seven and eight so it counted it counted as this right so three and uh, this is four and this is five and this is six and this is seven and seven again because it's a key field and eight and eight so that's the reason we have eight rows here right out of the aggregator stage so that's the reason we have eight here and what did we mention uh, what what did we give a uh, constraint as here count field is equal to one right and how many we have uh, how many f how many records do we have uh, as one so one is repeating okay you can just count it here so it's repeating so it's not that one so one only one is there and f uh, five is uh, five is only repeating once and this is also one so one five six and one will be your output so basically it counts to three right five six one five and six so that's the reason it's giving the output as three okay so now uh, let's move on to this so copy is writing 14 here that's good but since we joined on student id and the type of join yeah sorry i forgot to mention here the type of join is inner right so it just matches the key fields which are like which are coming from the uh, primary link primary or left join or something like that uh, not left join left link okay so and then because it's coming only three and it's 14 it's the inner join it's giving three so let's see uh, the data and decide if if we have the same three records or other different records so what did we get here 11 Taylor 96 right so you might be see here 11 is not Chris here but something 11 is here because I just sorted for the purpose of Excel I just sorted based on the key field I didn't sort uh, I didn't re uh, rearrange any of this okay so but that's not how data stage works so 11 let's see here the original data 11 is Taylor and the 96 okay so this is just once so 11 is 1 right so 11 is 1 okay so that's we are good and now what is the other one 16 16 is just 5 which is like the fifth fifth uh, group count row okay and what's 15 here uh, 15 15 15 okay something messed up so yeah this do we have 15 no 16 sorry so, okay yeah 16 is halpert 86 okay so we don't have any more 16 so that's uh, that's a unique one and 17 uh, again obviously is Taylor 96 and we don't have uh, any repeating for that so that's it so this is how uh, you gather uh, uh, unique uh, unique records 
okay and now uh, what did I say if you have uh, this is when business says just capture the unique records and we don't really care about the non unique ones just we don't really care about them just process only the unique ones okay but what happens when uh, what happens and how your design changes when you get something requirement same requirement but they want to collect the uh, non unique records too okay so instead of join here you might want to put uh, something like a merge stage because join does not accept reject links right but the merge stage can accept reject links so that it can just write the unique records to one file and the other uh, other records which are not unique will just uh, 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 will just uh, drop out or will be rejected and that can be collected in another file and uh, I'm not going to show this because it's going to be a long video and I really don't want to make that video because I don't uh, I want to show two other scenarios too okay and now uh, uh, it's last name so just sort on last name and again I didn't sort uh, I didn't sort it it's not 10 Beasley 90 it's, it's not that way I just sorted it on uh, this just one field okay I just sorted it on this uh, yeah last name field alphabetically okay now let's see so Beasley and I don't see any Beasley here so this is the unique record it doesn't really care about student ID and course now it, the key field is just the last name okay so Chris and I don't see Chris anymore because it's sorted alphabetically you just see up, up or down right I don't Chris I don't see any Chris so this is unique too and Disney yeah I see the all Disney here even though this uh, sorry never talk about that so yeah I see Disney okay because this is a key field it's distant is repeating so all these are non unique and 14 help uh, sorry Halpert uh, yeah Halpert I don't see any Halpert here so it's a unique record again and Ricky Ricky so these are repeating and it's non unique Sydney Sydney these are non unique Taylor Taylor non unique and null null yeah I don't know but yeah it's non unique I guess okay so yeah so how many records did we get now uh, unique records right so one two three yeah it's again three so basically we should get again three records three non uh, sorry three unique records right so now it's basically the same uh, same what do I say same design but just the grouping key will be last name okay everything will be same however you want to delete this and map the last name field because we are not passing student ID field here and the other thing you want to do is delete this and map last name here okay okay and now the joining field also changes because the key field now is last name right and uh, this drop down shows it's pretty much clear because the two uh, output links has a common last name this is a key field okay and again the type of join is inner because we are just uh, worrying about that and the trans I mean the constraint is still the same unit count field uh, count field is equal to one okay and now it should be again three okay let's see now uh, invalid derivation for output where is that oh probably we didn't do this yeah so okay so okay last name here and student id here we just make we just want to make sure that we map everything after we change the key fields and aggregator fields and all that thing okay so now let's see it should be three as per our excel analysis right so it should again the three unique records should be written to the output and once it's written to the output let's see the data and see if it's the same uh, same data or something else so basically it's pretty much same 14 14 8 and then filtering out it's 3 and it's again 3 rows are written to the output right now let's see the data here so what did we talk about Beasley right so Beasley so we do see Beasley Beasley 90 so okay let's see the original data so 10 Beasley 90 okay that's good because Beasley is only once that's unique and the other one is 10 Chris so now this is the point so 10 even though the student I is repeating itself it's not worried or it doesn't really care about that because what is a key field in this scenario last name is a key field right 
and Chris there is no repeating so this is the unique record okay and the, what's the other one Halpert so Halpert is also unique because it's not repeating right so the three records so this is what it is uh, to grab the unique records but what happens in real time I mean this is for your understanding purpose but most of the times in real time we just don't do it in uh, don't do it on one column because when we get huge data and we have huge key I mean large number of keys more than one key right so that's actually this is the like most uh, closer one to real time scenario okay so now we're gonna have two grouping IDs okay so I'm I'm wanna see let me show you the Excel one okay so now the scenario is something like uh, this okay so these two are key fields in my scenario okay so now the basic uh, scenario which the third scenario which I'm showing in this video okay so I sorted based on student ID and last name okay so the unique record means the student ID and last name combination should not repeat itself okay so we have seen here right even though 10 Beasley is there and 10 Chris uh, sorry where is that so what did we see here 10 Beasley was unique and 10 Chris was unique because we sorted on the last name and Beasley and Chris even the student IDs are same it didn't really care because the key field is uh, key field was last name right but now in this case in this case it cares because these two are the key fields okay so uh, 10 Beasley and 10 Chris 10 Chris the combination is unique right it cares about the combination it doesn't care about the individual ones but it cares about the combination so 10 Beasley is un unique right and now 10 Chris I don't see any 10 Beasley and I, do, I don't see any 10 Chris either so these two are unique and 11 Taylor it's also unique because I don't see any other 11 Taylors here so it's unique and 13 Disney I see 3 13 and Disney combination so these are none of these three records are called unique okay and 14 Sydney I have uh, I see two combinations 14 Sydney and 14 Sydney so either these two are called uh, unique records okay so those are not unique records and 16 halpert I don't see any other 16 halpert combination so it's unique and 17 Taylor I don't see any other 17 Taylor combination so it's unique and 18 and null 18 null 18 null so this is not a uh, uh, ideal combination so it's not unique and it's pretty much same with this two so it's null and Ricky and again null and Ricky so the combination is repeating I guess so that's the reason it's non unique so how many unique keys we got so 10 Beasley 1 10 Chris 2 11 Taylor 3 and 16 Halbert 4 and 17 Taylor 5 right so now if we uh, sort and if we sort or if we group the student ID and last name fields we should get five unique records okay so let's do that so I'm not changing anything I'm just adding another uh, stu uh, another key field basically and yep that's it and I don't do anything and now I'll just add one more mapping output here I'm just mapping one more output field here and I'll do the same thing in here too okay I'm just adding an additional field that's all I'm doing okay and now this joining key the joining keys will also be uh, two right because we're trying to do inner join based on two fields so student ID and join and here try last name okay sorry last name is already mapped and student ID should be mapped too okay so yep and now let's run and see the job and close with analyzing the output from the excel and the data stage so let's run the job so you see here 14 and 14 that's good and now the count is changed here so uh, for the student ID key field and last name in like individual key fields we had eight rows right because we are doing aggregation on uh, two fields now we have nine rows coming out okay and out of the nine rows five rows are unique so five rows right 
so we analyze the same right right uh, we analyze that five rows will be unique right so those are the five rows and now we just want to make sure the count is okay but we just want to make sure if those are the five rows we thought of or are those different so let's just see the data so now let's see so 10 Beasley on data stage right and 10 Beasley here too, 10 Beasley 90, 10 Beasley 90. So this is the unique record, right? And the second one is 10 Chris 96, 10 Chris, why is it Chris 90? Okay, I don't know why it's 90 here. Okay, yeah, so because we didn't sort this, so yeah, it doesn't really care about the course field because we didn't sort it on uh, Excel, right? But data stage that doesn't, that just maps all the fields to itself, right? So yeah, just don't care about this, okay? So uh, next is Levin Taylor, uh, yeah, Levin Taylor, right? Yep, this is unique. Um, next thing is sixteen Halpert. Sixteen Halpert is unique. Yep, sixteen Halpert is unique here. And next again is Levin Taylor. So this combination, see, so Levin Taylor and seventeen Taylor, because these combinations are unique, right? Names are repeating and the student IDs are repeating, but the combinations are not repeating. That's important. Okay. So that's unique too. And yep, those are the five records we matched uh, based on our analysis. And it's the same five records that are showing up in the data stage too. So we are good there. Okay, so that's all. That's that's pretty much uh, what I want to show you in this video. And the other thing which I want to tell you is because this is a very small data, I didn't really uh, sort the data or I didn't really partition the data. Okay but when you are dealing with the uh, like huge amount of data you might want to uh, partition the data basically a grouping right so you want you might want to uh, sort if it's really huge data before aggregator you might want to use the sort stage 2 to uh, to avoid confusion over in link sort because sometimes when there's like very bulk of data like millions and millions of data I'm not sure, but uh, I have seen that in link sorting, I mean, on the link sorting doesn't really work well. So explicit sort needs to be uh, required. So uh, when, I'm, when I'm dealing with like huge amount of data, let's say like probably 30 million or 20 million or even like 5 million data, I usually put a sort stage of before a sort stage before aggregator stage and partition uh, like that, do the hash partitioning thing, hash partitioning thing uh on the key field whatever the grouping fields i give uh because it's student id and last name in this scenario so i just give them so this combination each combination will go into one partition so that it will be easy for uh, aggregator and it will be a good idea for the performance point of view right because all those key fields whichever if all those grouping fields whichever you have given they go to the same partition so when they when when it moves to the next stage it will be easier uh, to have like count uh, field and all those things right so that's the reason you might want to do that because it's very huge i mean small data like 14 rows right so that's the reason I didn't really uh, do the partitioning or the sorting. Okay, so that's an important point which uh, I thought to mention. Okay, uh, so that's all, guys. That's all I want to show you. Uh, show you in this video. So probably uh, I think I'm gonna make uh, one or two more real time tasks and then get back to processing stages. Uh, what we left about. Okay, and uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching and uh, keep spreading the word. The point is to. Uh, encourage the data stage learners and feel good th uh, about themselves when you when they when they just uh, move to their new work or get hired or do well in the interviews they just want to feel good about themselves right so that's what the point is uh, of, of my making videos okay anyway uh, thank you guys thank you so much and uh, keep watching and keep subscribing and keep spreading the word thank you